Well, welcome back to Algebra. We're covering the concept of solving perfect square quadratic equations. Remember, those are just quadratics which have the variable, all of the variables wrapped up in a nice neat parentheses term, which is usually squared, which is always squared if it's a quadratic, which allows you to take the square root of both sides of the equation to solve it very simply. So it's kind of a simple uh, class of equations that makes it easier for us to solve. And so what we have is an example, just continuing on down the line, is an equation like this. y minus 7 quantity squared is equal to 12. Now you can see how easy it is to solve this because I can reveal the variable by just taking the square root of both sides. If I take the square root of the left, it'll cancel with the squaring term, leaving y minus 7. On the right, I have to insert my plus or minus, and then I have to, of course, take the square root of 12. Now what you need to do at this point is go off to the right and remind yourself, what is the square root of 12? It's 2 times 6 and that's 2 times 3. So we have a pair of 2's here. And so then I can uh, rewrite the square root of 12 as uh, y minus 7 equals plus or minus. Single 2 comes out, square root of what's left over, which is a 3. All right. And then to find out what y is equal to, we move the 7 over by addition. So it's going to be positive 7 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. And this is where you would leave it, right? Because what you have is two answers, plus or minus, meaning 7 plus the 2 times the square root of 3, and then also separately 7 minus 2 times the square root of 3. Those are two separate numbers. So if I were to plot this function that represents this equation here, if I were to plot this minus the 12, that's the function on one side all by itself, then I would be setting that function equal to zero, which is the crossing points, right? And the crossing points are going to be in two real locations because we have real numbers for the answers. So this equation, if I were to graph it, actually does cross the axis in two places. All right. So let's compare and contrast that with uh, the next problem, which would look like this. 